Alrighty, what's up guys? Welcome back to my WordPress tutorial step by step. Today we're going to be talking about widgets and what exactly is a widget. A widget is just a specific block that performs a specific function for you. That's all it is. Okay, so you'll see when we add one. So on this theme, I'm going to add the widgets to the right here. That's what it does by default. So this is my main content. Obviously, I don't have any widgets right now. So that's all that's here. So I'm going to go up to here and I could either go to widgets right there or I can click this, go to the dashboard, go to appearance widgets down here. Okay. So here's all the, the places I could add widgets and it's different for every theme. So for this theme, I could add a widget at the bottom of content on posts and pages. Okay. And I could add one on the left side and the right side. That's, that's what this one and two means. And it's really going to take some playing around to figure out what your theme offers for widgets. But most all of them offer a sidebar. Every, every theme will offer a sidebar, okay? And usually every theme offers a content bottom, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. This is how you delete a widget. You just click it down and delete, okay? So these are the available widgets that I have. I have an archives, which is a monthly archive of your site's posts, okay? And these are pretty simple. It, it tells you what they do below them. And let's say I want a different widget. Let's say I want a, uh, uh, a widget that is a simple link widget or a recommended reading widget or something like that, you know, then that's fine. I could Google that and download it as a plugin and then I would have it available that way. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a second, but for now, Let's look at the widgets that we already have. So archives, let's say I'm like, yeah, that'd be cool to have. Then people can see my posts from, you know, whenever. So I can title it whatever I want, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it as archives. And then there's other options too for each widget. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that one. And uh, you could also add a custom menu. You know, we learn how to make menus. So you could have another menu on the side of your website you could have, you know, some kind of song or something here. You could have categories, but we already made, we already made a topics link right here in an, um, two videos ago that it showed how to do this. But if you, if you didn't want a topics, uh, navigation link, you could have your categories over here. So let's go ahead and do that just to see what it looks like. And I could, let's say I'll call this topics. Let's say I don't want to call it categories. I can do that too. Okay, and uh, text. This is a cool one. Uh, text um, is literally whatever you want it to be. So if I have a Google AdSense account and I have advertisements, the instructions are gonna be to post some computer code to your website. And what they're talking about if you have a WordPress site is to post it to a text widget. So let's say I signed up for Google AdSense. They're going to tell me to copy this big JavaScript code. Okay. I would then paste that here and save it. And it would be on my sidebar if I wanted a widget to appear there. And also I could have images in a text uh, widget as well by using, but the, they have an image um, widget now, but it, it used to be, you'd have to use some HTML, which is hypertext markup language which is what uh, computer programmers use to create and format documents on web pages. You used, you used to have uh, to use that on WordPress, but you don't need to anymore because you can, you can display an image that way. So yeah, so as you can see, widgets are something that you need to figure out if you need them. And if you do, figure out the ones that you need. Okay, so this is gonna be a blog. So if I had a, a business or something, I might have a calendar over here. Okay. Okay. I already have three. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Okay. So I only have two posts, which I posted today. So that's my archives, which is pretty cool. And then here's my calendar. You know, that could be helpful for people. Then here's my topics. So, I mean, this is very simple, easy stuff. Now I'm going to show you how to 
add a uh, a new widget that might not be offered uh, automatically with your theme, okay? So the best thing to do for this is Google. So I'm here at Google right now, and I'm gonna Google top 25 or something like that, you know? And look, I already found a site. You could see I visited it earlier. And you click this, and it, it shows you all these awesome widgets. So recent posts, that would be a great widget to have. And um, by default, WordPress comes with it. So uh, category, I showed you guys that one. Um, so simple social icons. Let's say you have social media, and you want to add those icons to your sidebar. Okay, this is a widget you could use. So if I wanted to use this, I would right click new tab or just click it. I'm just doing this for the video. And this is a plugin. Just to show you how this works is I would click download. This is a simple social icon plugin from wordpress.org. You can see plugins and it offers a place to download. If you if you scroll down, you could read the description about it. Uh, facts, you know, you can just look at all these other things, you know, the FAQ, you can look at the contributors and developers. Most important, look at the ratings. If you ever see a plugin that's like a, few, a ton of one stars, you know, a few three stars, like two five stars, just don't, don't bother getting it because that means they don't update it very much and it's not very helpful. So I, I went ahead and downloaded that one and now I want to use it, okay? So I'm going to go to plugins, add new, Upload plugin. Whoops, clicked on the wrong thing. Upload plugin. And then it says choose file. So all plugins you download are going to be in a dot zip format. So you're going to click choose file and go ahead and choose the file, which I'm going to do now. Okay, guys, I went ahead and found the file. I chose it. And here it is. So I'm going to click install now. And this is going to install this plugin to my own WordPress. Okay. It said, Plugin installed successfully. I'm going to activate. Awesome. So here's my list of plugins. You know, this is one that just came with WordPress. I'm going to delete that. You want to go ahead and delete all the ones that come uh, by default because none of them are helpful. So you have to deactivate them first and then delete them. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just do plugins in this video as well since we're already talking about widgets and widgets and plugins go hand by hand so here this is what I just downloaded simple social icons okay let me get rid of this last one that came by default awesome great so this is one that I just downloaded so let's go to appearance and then widgets Now look, here it is, simple social icons. So let's say I want to get rid of this calendar and I want to put simple social icons instead. I just drag it right there and it's going to appear in there, okay? I could put follow me on social media and you can mess with all the settings and everything else, the color, everything, okay? And um, so this, this is a place for you to put your uh, social media information. Okay, so if I had a YouTube a YouTube account, I don't, you know, I have my own obviously, but I would put my YouTube URL right there. You know, I don't have any of this other stuff. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and save this and just see what it looks like, just for the sake of the video. You know, you might have Facebook and Twitter and things like that that you wanna share. So we're gonna click this and follow me on social media. Here's a little YouTube thing. It's clickable, look at that. And it brings you to YouTube, cool. So that's how that works. So if, if you want a specific plugin, you know, this Google Maps, if you're a business owner, I recommend this one big time. You would just have to add Google Maps, Google, Google Maps in WordPress and uh, use Social Account Plus, it shows all your followers as a plugin. Um, an image, you know, uh, custom, you know, if you had a, some kind of store, you could, you know, that's 
a little bit more advanced. Uh, compact archives, authors widget, YouTube channel gallery, everything like that. So these are all widgets that you could use. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, plugins since we already went over it. So a plugin is simply something that adds additional functionality to your website. As you can see, we already have this one that we activated. So it's good to have some basic plugins that all WordPress sites have. So I'm going to go to add new and go to popular. And this is where we can see the plugins that other people are using. And if they're so popular, there must be a good reason for people using them. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good rule of thumb for WordPress. Okay. But that doesn't mean download everything you see because it's popular. Like obviously this, I don't use this. Um, actually I do. This is for um, to protect against spam on your comments. So if I wanted this, I would just click install now. I installed it. Okay, contact form seven. This is what we're gonna use for our contact page. Install now. Yoast SEO, I highly recommend this to help you with your search engine optimization. Install now. Um, WooCommerce, that's something for uh, people that are selling e-commerce products. We're not going to use that. Yeah, as you can see, a lot of them all do the same thing. So all-in-one SEO pack and Yoast SEO both help you with your search engine optimization, okay? So you'd have to pick one or the other. You can't use them both, right? Because then they, they mess with each other. So pick one for um, pick one for what you're trying to do. I recommend getting the contact one, an anti-spam one, an SEO one, and uh, maybe a security one that doesn't uh, hurt to install that. I would install that. I'm not going to do it. And then the one more I highly recommend you get no matter what is a cache plugin. It could be WP Super Cache. The, um, there's plenty of them, but this one is super popular. I'm going to install this one. Okay, so I got all my plugins and... Um, uh, another one, helpful one could be Google Analytics dashboard for WordPress. I'm going to install that one. And uh, Duplicator, as you can see, if you want to migrate your website or back it up and move it to a new domain or something, you could do that. And to figure out how to use these different plugins, you know, I could have a video that is five hours long explaining every one, but it doesn't really make any sense. So you need to learn how to use them yourself. So for Contact Form 7, I just, I just installed it. So I'm going to go ahead and click activate. Okay. Then I'm going to go to settings. That's what you're going to do for a lot of them. All right. Awesome. So this is the contact form that this one comes with. And this is something called a short code. Not every plugin has a short code, but this one does. So I'm just going to cl click this, copy it, go to my, um, my pages. I'm going to show you how this works. Click my contact page. I'm going to edit it. And I'm just going to paste this in there and then update. Visit site. And as you can see, when I click contact now, I have a contact form. That's what my plugin did for me. It created a contact form. So if I wanted to send myself a message and then hit send, it would go to my email. But I have to set it up for my email, right? So I'm going to go to dashboard. Then we go to plugins, my installed plugins. Then we go back to my, my settings on my contact form. And I'm going to edit it, right? Okay, so I click mail here. And I'm going to put my email address that I want all this stuff to go to. So I'm not going to give out my email address right now. But let's say my email address is free computer help, uh, you know, Okay, something like that. That's not my email, but let's say that's what it is, okay? So that would be something I would have to change. And if I wanted to edit this stuff, I could. But you, you click mail, copy this short code, paste it into your post page or text widget. You can, you can put this anywhere. We just put it in a page. It's a short code, okay? And this plugin tells us to do that. And then this is where I want the message to go to. So I'm going to go save. And, um, and yeah, so we're going to go ahead and visit site. So you should test this on your website. You should put in your name, your email and everything and hit send. 
and then open up your email pretending you're a guest. Fill in this stuff, hit send, then open up your own email that you put in that mail uh, slot right here and see if you got the email. And if you did, it works. Great. So we're going to go to our other plugins. And to learn how to use the plugin, you just have to activate it. Like this one, you just activate it and you can change some of the settings. Okay, this one requires an API key. So you have to get an API key. This one might be a paid one. I'm not sure. But essentially, you just you follow the instructions of each plugin. A good rule of thumb is you go to install plugins, you activate it. It's like this one. You just activate it, and it starts working. If you want to tweak the settings, you can. If you don't know how, then don't. It's set up to where it's going to make your website faster. The, the, the cache plugins, what they do is they plant uh, cookies and things on people's computer to where next time they visit your website, it's going to be faster, okay, for them. Everything's going to come up quicker. So you, you always want a, a contact plugin. You always want an anti-spam plugin. You always want a uh, SEO plugin, which is down here, and a cache plugin. Those are like the minimum that I would recommend. And then I would recommend a security one too. And if you really want to learn how to use a plugin, you can just, you, um, you, you go to plugins, you could read about them. So this one, you read about it. You, know, you could read about installation. It tells you step by step what to do. And then if you need help, you click support. Okay. And then there's a whole list of forums. And uh, this is WordPress.org. Let's look at some other plugins, some popular ones. So here's the uh, the widgets you're talking about. There's that. Okay, so I'm at my WordPress dashboard. I'm going to go to Add New. Okay, I'm going to go to Popular. These are on plugins. Okay, and then now I'm on WordPress.org, and I'm with the plugins. Okay, here, here's the featured ones. You see they're the same thing. There's really not that many that you need. You only need like four or five plugins, really. Just the see, look, popular plugins. This is the exact same thing as my dashboard shows. And if you go to the, the um, WordPress.org here, you could actually read about them in depth. So let's say I want to use learn how to use Yoast SEO. I would click that, and it I would read about the description. I mean, look how popular this is. I mean, obviously, this plugin helps a lot and that's why people use it so it talks about this I would recommend taking the time to read this and then taking the time to learn how to use it okay so if I wanted to use Yoast SEO I would uh, click activate because I already downloaded it and then I would have to go to settings and then some plugins what they do is they they show up up here or they show up on the side here and that's fine Every plugin is a little bit different. Here's my caching plugin. And go to notifications. And uh, yeah, right here, this is the Yoast SEO. This is their settings um, page. Okay. So I can um, see, need help conf uh, determining your settings, configure Yoast step by step. So this is what I would do I would hit open configuration wizard. And then I would, I would go through all these steps, right? So every plugin is a little bit different and it takes a little getting used to to know how to set them all up. Every pl most some plugins you download and they just start working fine like this one. You can tweak the settings if you want, but you don't have to. Some of them have a short code like this contact form, which is something you copy and paste into a post, page or widget. Some of them you have to mess with the settings on the widget area like the social uh simple social icons so appearance widgets remember we did this one right here drop down this is where i enter in all of my social media stuff is right here right so and then some of them require you like this one to do this whole configuration thing on their settings you go to settings and um here's the dashboard here's the notifications um, that they want you to do so you would read this and do what they want you would read this see it wants me to configure that's one of my notifications so I would have to configure right here okay 
So this one, I would need to go through each step by step to get it set up. Now, all in one SEO, the other uh, SEO uh, plugin, they don't require that. But I, I think Yoast is a little bit better. A lot of people like Yoast better. So that's what I would recommend is Yoast SEO. If you need a plugin to do something in particular, then just Google it. And I promise you there's probably going to be one there. So let's say I have a website that, um, that I want to just, let's say I have a recommended, I want recommended reading. So I'm a blogger and I want a, a little box over here to the right. It says recommended reading and I want some links. Okay. There's actually a widget called a uh, simple link widget. You know, that's another example. There's a recent post. I could put that here, but I think that's kind of a silly one because people can just see your post right here, you know, and then there's also a plugin that, um, that at the bottom of posts, it will show you related posts. That's called related posts. So you could, um, also search for plugins as well. So we're going to go to plugins, show you how to do that real quick. Add new. So if I downloaded one from a other website or something, I could upload it or I could search right here. So related posts. And there you go. There's actually several of them and I could just pick which one I want. So I probably would not pick that one. I would pick this one. It was updated more recently, uh, a lot higher reviews. So that's the one I would, I would pick. So yeah, that's about it for widgets and plugins. Um, figure out what you need, you know, for a blog. I think archives is a perfect one to have on the side. I think social media is a perfect one. And I think topics is a perfect one. If you don't already have it up here, if you wanted to, you could get rid of this, have blog videos, contact about, and then have your topics or categories down here. That's what I would recommend at least. So if you're a small business owner, I would recommend, um, having a text widget that says uh, hours and then having your hours listed on the side, maybe have your social media and then maybe have a Google maps location right there. Okay. So you just have to play with it. Google is your friend. You, you can Google as much as you want about this stuff. That's really how you figure out what you need. I'm just showing you how to use it. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to do um, images and videos in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for future video notifications. Feel free to donate by clicking the PayPal donation link below in the description. Visit our website at freecomputerhelp.net for programming tips, installation guides, and more.